What's the next trend in watchmaking? We've seen this question pop up everywhere we go. And by that, I mean the comment section of watch content and watch meetups. We've talked about repopularization of precious metals in watch cases, something that peaked in the 80s and then resurged in the 2000s. God, that still feels like just yesterday. Then came the era of quiet luxury, where yellow gold was deemed too showy and collectors preferred something a bit less loud, like white gold or platinum. It's more akin to the hyper car, high performance space than the high jewelry space that is commonly associated with watchmaking, and that is high-tech case materials. But the question remains, can this trend make the outdated designs relevant again? If you're looking for your next watch, check out Swiss Connection watches for new or pre-owned watches with new arrivals every week. Thanks. The PAM2231 is a stealthy beast, even more subdued with the lack of large rounded Arabic numerals that are a visual staple for the brand. Instead, leaning more towards the recognizable brutalist silhouette of the submersible design. The watch comes in a 42mm case with a thickness of 13.8mm, a broad lug width of 24 and a rather long lug-to-lug -lug measurement of 52.5mm. Obviously, it wears a bit too big on my slim 6.2-inch wrist, but I think anyone with medium-sized wrists could pull off the intentionally beefy appearance of this stealthy luxury tool watch. And that's kind of the oxymoron here. Stealth luxury. The case material isn't precious metal or luxurious in any way, but it's purely performance driven. Constructed out of Panerai's own proprietary mix of carbon composite, Garbatec, the watch is extremely light, tough, and yet somehow soft on the skin. Plus, this unique blend of carbon makes it so that the pattern appears unlike any standard carbon fiber, with more organic and wood-like camouflage pattern. Besides that, you get 300 meters of water resistance considering that this is a professional dive series with the dome sapphire crystal on top. The movement inside is the P900 automatic caliber, beating at a frequency of 4 hertz and offering 72 hours of power reserve when fully wound. The caliber is based on Val Florier's Ebosch, a movement manufacturer owned by the Richemont Group. This has allowed the group to extensively test, develop, and expand these calibers across multiple brands, with the Ebosch base even seen in IWC's latest pilot watches and engineers. So even if you're new to the Panerai universe, you can be rest assured that the movements are bulletproof. This sharing of base movement architecture also ensures long-term serviceability at reasonable prices. Wearing it on a rubber, leather, or a nylon NATO strap, the watch tends to offer a level of sporty versatility that I personally really like, something that I don't see in some of the other models from the brand. Besides carbon, that's been the hottest high-tech material of recent years in watchmaking, titanium is another high-tech material, but it isn't as new or as sexy. But as soon as Rolex introduces it in its own version in one of their hottest releases of 2023, guess what? Titanium is hot again. Personally, I don't think it was never not hot. There's just something super cool about a titanium watch, almost effortless. A complete opposite from the weighty heft of precious metals which now seem like an outdated feel of luxury on the wrist. This feels fresh. The next generation's definition of luxury. Light, comfortable, not as loud, not as flashy, but extremely durable. Rolex is far behind on the titanium trend, no doubt, but in typical Rolex fashion, when they do something, they take their sweet time and do it right. This Yachtmaster 42 in RLX Titanium is one of my favorite watches from the brand's current sports watch lineup. Where the iconic sub seems a bit tired, something to be expected when we hear Rolex, this is the unexpected a watch with a darker brush tone and a lighter feel than any 36mm Explorer you'll pick up, and yet it's still Rolex. The reference 226627 comes in a 42mm case with a thickness of 11.6mm, a lug width of 21 and a lug to lug of 50.3mm, this time making it wearable on my slim wrist. You get a sapphire crystal on top with the Cyclops magnifier over the date window at 3, 100 meters of water stints with a screw down crown, and one of the best looking bi-directional bezels I've seen on a watch, with a serochrome insert with raised Arabic numerals that have a beautiful light play. 
The purpose of this bi-directional bezel is to allow sailors to time their yacht maneuvers accurately. But if you're a normal person that owns a bike or a cat, you can still enjoy turning that bezel around because it is just so satisfying. Feeding inside is the automatic in-house Rolex Caliber 3235, feeding at 4 Hz and offering a power reserve of 70 hours. These watches aren't the first in the category of high-tech materials, be it titanium or carbon, but they point to a future where we see many big names in watchmaking heading towards, where luxury isn't about status or visual shine, but about long-term performance. I'm not saying that high-tech materials will ever replace the traditional gold or steel watches, but these are becoming more normalized, with even brands at the more entry-level luxury like Tudor, Formex, or Norcain pushing high-tech carbon-based materials to an extent that wasn't possible at their prices 5-10 years ago. These relatively newer materials not only look different, but they give a whole new feel on the wrist, and I think that newer wrist experience is key in keeping this hobby from dying out. What do you think of these two watches? And what do you think of brands advancing newer, lesser common high-tech materials in watch cases? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to check out Swiss Connection watches, website linked in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.